Well, with the Bears lead at 7-3. Pat Summerall here with John Madden. Be the final round in the 1991 NASCAR Winston Cup Championship title fight. <laughs> TNN proudly presents exclusive live coverage of NASCAR Winston Cup racing. Today, the Pyroyal 500. But this crowd is anticipating a real brawl here at Phoenix as we prepare for the 28th of the 29 race Winston Cup season this afternoon. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Joy, and you can sense it. You can feel it, a sense of urgency and anticipation in the air for this race today. The championship is uppermost, but there are other drivers looking to score here at Phoenix as well. You've met the two drivers that lead the championship chase. Let's go now down to our experts and the men who will guide their fates today. Neil Bonnet. Thanks, Mike. I've caught up with Richard Childers here in the garage. Richard, what have you done for the car, and what have you told Dale to make sure that y'all got a shot to leave here with the championship today? Well, you know, you get Dale in the car, he, we always come to try to win the race. You know, we may be a little more conservative than some of the guys out there that the pressure's on them to win the race. You know, we're here, the pressure's on us to try to win the championship. So, uh, really, we're pulling as much gear as a car can stand. And, uh, you know, we just told Dale to go out and run it like another race and uh, try to bring the championship home. When you tell him to run it like another race, that's not very conservative. Now, he, he'll run the car as hard as he can. It's kind of hard to uh, put a bridle on a racehorse. So, you know, he'll do a good job for us today. We'll just have to see what happens. Let's go down to Buddy Baker. Thanks, Neil. I'm here with Waddell Wilson, the man that makes all the calls on the number five car of Ricky Rudd. With Earnhardt so close and Davey Allison right behind you, everybody wants to know, is it offense well, or defense today? Well, Buddy, it's both today. You know, we've got to try to protect our back as well as our forwards, and uh, it's going to be very critical to us to try to finish the top five. Right now, if I know that knew I could finish the top five, I'd be tickled to death. But, you know, it's one of those races, we're not going to change our strategy any. We're just going to go just like we've been going all year, just as hard as we can, and try to make all the right calls and, you know, hope we don't get into any wrecks. Thank you, Waddell. Tell you, buddy, race to win or ride for points going to be a lot of tough chases made today. TNN's live coverage of the Pyro 500 is brought to you by new Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. Add more life to your car. And by Miller Genuine Draft, cold filtered for real draft taste. So get out of the old, get into the cold. Ricky Rudd, starting 14th, must run hard for Waddell Wilson and drive the race of his life to sustain his hopes to the title. Dale Earnhardt, starting 12th, knows he holds the upper hand, and you can be sure he and Richard Childress understand how to keep it that way. complete protection, Texaco has developed Haviland Formula 3 motor oil with not one, but three kinds of protection against heat stress, starting friction, and engine dirt. Haviland Formula 3. Add more life to your car. discovered its real draft taste, the world is a very cool place. Hey, I like to save money as much as the next guy, but what are the odds that there's going to be a sale on the part you need when your car breaks down? Baby, it's not going to happen. That's why I go to AutoZone. I mean, 
Uh, sure, you could wait around for a couple weeks and maybe beat their price by a few pennies someplace else. But I don't want to wait for a sale when I need a part. Now, what more could you ask for? Here we go. Welcome back to Phoenix, where the championship chase is uppermost in our coverage today. But meanwhile, there's a race to be won. Let's go down to the starting grid and the man who sits on the pole with Brock Yates. Well, Mike, that man is the driver of Junior Johnson's number 11 Ford Thunderbird, who was one of over two dozen drivers to shatter the track record here at the one mile at Phoenix. Jeff Bodine. Jeff, I know that you'd like to cap a season. You're going to lead the Junior Johnson team at the end of the season. You did very won a race uh, last month. Uh, you got $160,000 over that online to the Unical money from winning from the pole. Big incentive here. Well, you didn't have to tell me that. You put all this pressure on me. Uh, you know, our, our job is just to get in this buzz all the time, drive it, try to win races. Uh, yeah, we're fortunate enough to do that in Charlotte. We want to do it again here in Phoenix. Haven't won here before, and uh, no better place to start than right here on the pole. And if that Unical money does come along, that'd be great. We're in this business to win races. The heck with that money, right? <laughs> <laughs> Doll for sport, right, Jeff? All the best. Thank you. Okay. You know, it's just uh, interesting, a little footnote here, that on the outside Thank of the front both. row Don't in the you. number nine Melling's uh, Ford Stand Thunderbird is Bill Elliott, who is rumored to on be climbing show. into the seat of Junior Johnson's car next year. That's a story we'll be following, but that is just one of dozens of interesting stories and footnotes here at Phoenix. For more on another interesting story, let's go to my pal, Glenn Jarrett. Well, thanks, Brock. As Ricky Rudd sits anxiously waiting for the start of this race, he's got Dale Earnhardt right in his sight. He's starting right behind him on the grid. But there's another guy that he's got to be concerned with, too, and that's the guy that starts right next door to him, car number 28, Davey Allison. Davey has closed to within 46 points of Rudd. He's bearing down on him. Davey, you're close to second place in the points now. What's your strategy for today's race? Well, Glenn, Larry, and Robert, myself, have all talked about it, and we feel like that what we ought to do for the remaining two races this year is just what we've done to get ourselves here. And we're going to race hard. We're going to try to lead as many laps as we can. We're going to try to win the race. Well, this team has really come together. You've won four races. The Winston Plus, over a million and a half dollars worth of prize money. What's been the key to success this year? Well, the biggest, the, the biggest key to it has just been uh, when Larry McReynolds came over, it added the leadership and the, the knowledge that we needed. And the guys have just filled in with them. You know, they worked hard behind them. They've given me everything that I've asked for and more. And, you know, we've come together as a team, and that's been the key. Okay, keep your eye on Davey Allison today. He has been awfully, awfully strong of late. One of the most consistent runners on the field this year. His last win came at Rockingham two weeks ago. For more on that, let's go to Mike Joy for this week's Haviland Update. Two weeks ago in Rockingham, the weather was cool, but Kyle Petty had the hot hand early. His Pontiac chased $159,000 in bonus money from the pole. But Harry Gant would put an end to that after just 47 laps and would dominate most of the day. Gant's old led 260 of 492 circuits. This race would be decided on the last pit stop. The air wrench on the right rear misfires on Gant's car. Harry took this stop holding a comfortable cushion with 40 laps to go. But the pit stop took over 30 seconds. And when Gant came back to the racetrack, Davey Allison was in the lead. Allison's Ford led the last 16 laps to capture its fourth win of the season. Davey finished one second ahead of Harry Gant. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt finished seventh, five spots ahead of Ricky Rudd, and added to his point lead, which now stands at 157. Allison is just 46 points back of second, and Gant only 60 points out of third. Mark Martin, Ernie Irvin, Ken Schrader, or Sterling Marlin could be in fifth place at the end of today. Earnhardt's magic number, if he leaves Phoenix 185 points ahead of Rudd, he is the champion. And if Earnhardt finishes the day with a 151-point lead, he will only have to fire the engine in Atlanta to be the champion. That's how the points will shake out here today as you look at this starting field, 43 cars strong. Jeff Bodine won the pole here for the inaugural race at Phoenix in 1988. Sits on the pole again here today. Second pole of the season, 29th of his career. He's won once from the pole, did it last year at Martinsville, but nobody's done it here at Phoenix International Raceway. 
Battering of Winston-West drivers in the field here as well. They had 59 cars take time to try to qualify for this race, the most we've had since Daytona. This is the only Winston Cup race. The command from John Kyle, U.S. Congressman from Arizona, words that these sun-drenched race fans west of the Mississippi have been waiting a whole year to hear. There is no other Winston Cup race west of the Detroit area but for this one. Mike, I've been waiting a whole week. I've heard all the points, all the this, all the that. This place is really going to be a good race today. We've got a lot of guys needing to win. I'm ready to turn these things loose, see what kind of show we're going to have. I am, too. All the anticipation and, and articles and platitudes and all of the various scenarios of the point standings. Now, let's turn the page and put a new one in the record book, and let's run this Pyroil 500. On the pole, Jeff Bodine, Bill Elliott on the outside in fourth. Mark Martin's Ford is third. Harry Gant qualified fourth, but he qualifies that well. Watch out. Alan Kulwicki, the first race winner here at Phoenix with Derek Cope in the third row. Kenny Schrader can move up in the points today. He's with Brett Bodine's Buick. Sterling Marlin, well up in the points. So is Rusty Wallace. Darrell Waltrip, the 10th place point man. There's Earnhardt in row 12, and right behind him is two closest pursuers in the points. Allison and Rudd. Ernie Irvin in the eighth row with Hut Strickland's Buick, Dale Jarrett, and Kyle Petty. Morgan Shepard's Ford. Richard Petty qualified on the first day. Rookie Ted Musgrave, along with Rick Wilson in row 11. Dave Marcus and West Coaster Bill Sedgwick. And there's Rick Mast and Jimmy Spencer in the 13th row. Joe Rutman and Chad Little debuting new colors today. Randy LaJoy in the Cale Yarborough car and Mike Waldron back in 30th. Larry Pearson along with Mike Kate Chase in the A.J. Foyt car. Stanley Smith from Alabama, so is Jeff Purvis, Terry Labonte, and Mark Reed from Bakersfield, California. Gary Collins and Mike Wallace, three Wallace brothers in this race, not a record. More on that later. Bill Schmidt and Bobby Hamilton and the Provisionals. Kenny Wallace, Butch Gilliland from Anaheim, and 63-year-old Herschel McGriff, who ran his first race in September 1945, is in this field. We'll have in-car cameras for you today. We'll be watching out of Rusty Wallace's Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac. There is the 360-degree view race cam that mounts to the roll cage. Rusty's car. There's the face cam mounted on the right side roll cage. Look at Rusty, and there's the bumper cam. That bumper view is filled with Dale Earnhardt. We'll also have a camera inside of Rick Wilson in the Stavola Brothers car, the Snickers Buick. Starting 22nd as he looks ahead on the grid to Richard Petty, 20th with the race cam. And also in that Wilson car, there's the face cam that's mounted to the right corner of the dashboard. And a bit of a new view, a roof cam from that car as well uh, for Rick Wilson. He'll be showing you those pictures today. And on pit road, we'll also have uh, a bit of a view for you as well. Kind of a neat thing. Give you that in a moment. But first, let's have a look at this Phoenix International Raceway. Buddy, very unique facility here. There's a look at the turn four areas that come down into the front straightaway, D-shaped oval, a little bit more banking in the turns at one and two. But look at the differences here in the straightaways. That backstretch is tricky. Well, you call it a backstretch, but it's actually like a road course. It's got a dog leg right in the middle, and you really have to be careful going through there. It's very narrow, and you go through there wide open right into a flat corner in three. And the weather today, you couldn't buy a better weather to sit in the stands and watch a stock car race. All you folks in Minnesota who had to, they had to shovel 27 inches of snow out of the satellite dishes at the cable companies. Well, here it's 71 degrees, little humidity, very light wind, sunny and clear. This is, is just great. Down on pit road, you'll be in the pits of Ricky Rudd much of the day. William Grimm, you don't know him as that, you know him as Banjo. Kind of a takeoff on Banjo Matthews, a neat story in itself. But Banjo's a tire changer for Ricky Rudd, and you'll have the helmet cam mounted up there on his headset and see what he sees as he goes about his duties in servicing the second place car in the Winston Cup point standings. They're on the pace lap here at Phoenix. We'll be back with the start of the Pyro 500 right after these messages. Don't wait. Get the news weekly of motoring, Auto Weeks. Don't wait for driving impressions. Auto Week drives them all and tells you about them first. Don't wait for car news. Auto Week covers the world. Auto shows, the new, the old, and brings it to you fast. 
Don't wait for racing news. Get the news weekly of motoring. Auto Week brings you the winningest coverage first. Don't wait. Get Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring. Now, call 1-800-851-2600 for a full year. 52 issues at the special TV price of $19.95. Just 38 cents an issue. Save $80 off the cover price. You've thought about it. Stop waiting. Do it now. Call 1-800-851-2600 for the News Weekly of Motoring. Two, three. Davy Allison believes. Mario and Michael Andretti believe. Don Prudhomme believes. For complete protection, you need a complete motor oil. Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. Yeah. The temperature never drops below Xerox. That's very important to remember, especially at a time like this, when it's very deserted and very cold. Ah, you did remember Xerox antifreeze. The temperature never drops below Xerox. Due to TNN Motorsports' live coverage of Sunday's Pie Royal 500 race, winners, usually seen Sundays at 5.30 p.m., will be seen this Sunday a half hour later at 6 p.m. Eastern on TNN. At Phoenix International, the new Chevy Blazer, just introduced by GM, leads the field around here as they come down pit road at the mandated speed limit. We'll be set to go racing in one lap. Four out of the first five cars are Fords as they qualified here. Goodyear bringing radial tires to Phoenix as you watch from Rick Wilson's car. Uh, radials here for the first time. 27 cars will the old track record in qualifying. Very, very bright sun there. Here's Gary Beveridge. He is the tire carrier for Davey Allison and Robert Yates, the number 28 car. And there is his headset cam. We'll be down to Davey's pits as well. There's what he sees as they prepare and do their pre-race duties. Get set to go here. Half a lap to the start. Very Turn critical three. start of the season, too. These guys in the points battle have got to get a good start here and not have problems early in this race. Earnhardt starts 12th, Davey Allison 13th, Ricky Rudd 14th. Pace vehicle begins to stretch the field a little bit. Dives to pit road. Jeff Bodine to bring them up to speed. Bill Elliott in blue alongside. And we're racing at Phoenix. The penultimate stop on the Winston Cup Tour is underway. 500 kilometers, 312 laps. And Bodine on the brake jumps out front. Bill Elliott gets a good pull off the outside of turn two. Mark Martin's in third. Harry Gann is fourth. Derek Pope is fifth. Alan Kowicki, the sixth place car. There's the title fight just outside of Rusty Wallace. Earnhardt, Rudd, right there. Davey Allison behind Darrell Walters. One lap under green. The Jimmy Means car with Mike Wallace aboard comes to pit road. Stop and go penalty for jumping the start. The bumper cam on the Rusty Wallace car. Hot Strickland coming up alongside an old DW. Darrell just tucked right in there. Behind Wallace, the 1989 Winston Cup champ. At second place, the Ford fight it out. Elliott in blue, Mark Martin in red right behind him. And then Mr. Fall season here again. I was talking to Harry Gant's group this morning. They said after about six to eight laps, he really gets very consistent and runs as fast on old tires as he does new. So that makes him tough again. Back to the title fight. Here's Earnhardt and Rudd with Huck Strickland. Earnhardt started 12th, running 10th. Brought it 12th position. And there's a look at Davey Allison and Darrell Walton from the back of the Rusty Wallace car. Rick Wilson trying to move up on Richard Petty and Morgan Shepard on the outside. Neil, that makes you homesick right there. I say that every week, but when you see him going at it like that, it's just like you're in the car, guys. That's what it looks like. I sure miss it. I tell you that, that is a good sight to see right there. Here, here's Earnhardt gets the pressure from Hutch Strickland on the outside. And at this track, we have seen him, even though it's pretty flat. The outside lane is workable for these cars. Huck Strickland 
has the award, I think, for the fella everybody would most like to see win his first race this year. He's done a great job for Bobby Ellison. And I think that sentiment carries over for Bobby Ellison. I'd like to see his team win a race, and Hutch really been running the car well all season long. This is for 10th place, and Strickland's going to take it away. He came from 16th to 10th in four laps. Hutt Strickland, number 12. He's done it all the hard way on the outside of the racetrack, too. Ernie Irvin goes with Earnhardt, but Strickland may be a little quicker here up the outside. And here's Rudd coming up. The championship contender is about to be side by side. Up front, unmolested, is Jeff Bodine, but we're back with the championship chase. Bodine, Elliott, Martin, Gant, and Goat, the front five. Neil, that's unusual to see Earnhardt starting to drop back in the first of a race. You know, he usually goes right up to the front. But he's got a gear in that car that really turns a lot of RPM down the back straightaway. And that could be a deciding factor later on in the race for him to really get, you know, up front when it counts. Yeah, we talked to him, uh, Childers before the race, and he said he put Dale Warren in a lot of gear in the car. The key is he's going to have to pedal that thing early in this race. He's going to have to try to lift it near the straightaways, and that's hard for someone like him to do. Right here, this part of the track, near the back straightaway, that's where he can over rev the motor. So he's going to have to play a little bit cautious early on. Earnhardt and Rudd are nose to tail. In December, at the Winston Cup banquet, the champion gets a million dollars. The runner-up has to settle for 400 grand. That is a huge <laughs> drop. I, yeah, but settling for 400 is not real bad, but, <laughs> but it is a big drop. I think wearing those rings and those buckles has a lot to do with it, winning the championship. A big drop when you've worked this hard for this long. In the longest season in professional sports, February to November. And here's Walter coming up. Mix it up a little with Earnhardt and Rudd. Ernie Irvin moved past both of those cars. Ernie Irvin had been really fast in practice, and everybody thought he would qualify well. He went out early, and there was all ground on the track, and he qualified back in the pack, so it felt like he would be able to move up. Here comes Darrell. He got Ricky. Snuck inside at the dog leg. Snuck inside of Earnhardt there, but... Earnhardt will give him the bottom. As they race out of four. There's Rusty Wallace. Got hooked up with Ricky Rudd there coming off the corner. Tangled just a little bit. Rudd had tried Earnhardt on the outside, found nothing there. Now he goes to the bottom, but he's locked up in that battle with Wallace. <laughs> Dale Jarrett gets a little close to Rusty as they come off two. See how close that wall is when they come off of two. That's a tough shot. See how they close up on him getting in the corner here. Boy, these cars laying right on the ground when they load up. They've got a five-inch ground clearance through when they go to inspection, but when they drive them off in the corner, that spoiler. Trouble at turn four. It is Joe Rutman and Randy LaJoy. Boy, he's in a bad spot. Ah, that looks good. He's out of the groove, at least. The car that triggered that accident ended up being uninvolved. Kyle Petty was moving way back in the field. Joe Rutman had got underneath Kyle and broke traction spinning up into the path of Randy LaJoy, the former NASCAR North champion, second-generation driver from Norwalk, Connecticut, finishing out the season for Cale Yarbrough. They've had trouble all week. They had to put the car back wrecked it, I think, in practice or qualifying, and just got the car back together for the race and all. He's having trouble already. Ten laps are complete. First caution of the day. We haven't seen much of Jeff Bodine. He had about a six-car length lead out in front of Bill Elliott at the time of the caution much single file the front four so we stayed with the battle for the point race. Seems like the battle for the point race is right where a lot of passing was going on. We had I don't know if they're being cautious but like with Darrell those guys getting around him is a really big thick battle back there. No damage to Joe Rutman's car and not much on Randy LaJoy. Both cars able to continue. Country singer Joe Diffie sang the national anthem here had a number of top 10 hits including is it cold in here or is it just you i wish he'd sung that one <laughs> let's have a look at it Whoa. i don't know whether we blame kyle on that one or not that looked like everybody kind of got together there and it just didn't work out for the 66 okay. car and for us he had backed up though right in front of Rutman. yeah and i think joe was looking to go a little lower he yeah. got there into uh, Randy. Mike at that particular place right there forward the banking there's not much banking on this track but there's a flat area there when you get off in that flat area it's hard to keep the car under control and all you gotta do is hang one left side wheels off and you're gone and I think he kind of shoved Joe down into that area. Car 
Cars make the pit stops include LaJoy Rutman and West Coaster Bill Smith. Watching the Joe Rutman stop. Aubrey Hilly, Butch Mock, and the team. You know, they were hoping for a real good run today. I understand that Dinnerbell will not be on the car next year, and they're looking for sponsorship, and they're a very good race team. I'd like to see them get something hooked up. Well, it's that time of year. Everybody's looking for sponsors. Everybody's trying to get all this stuff organized for next year. It's tough. Well, that's like Jimmy Means. You know, he's trying to be a car owner now uh, and find out how that is, and he's got uh, Mike Wallace in the car. We'll pick up on that story when we come back. Twelve laps are complete here at Phoenix International Raceway. Jeff Bodine leads Bill Elliott, Mark Martin, Harry Gant, and Derek Cope. We'll be right back. Saturday on TNN Motorsports, it was a day marred with fender benders full of bumping and grinding, smoking and spinning, and caution the order of the day. But a real crowd please. CarQuest Auto Parts 300, Saturday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern on TNN Motorsports. The ultimate Winston Cup sweepstakes is back. Order the limited edition Winston Cup yearbook and enter the Booker Ride sweepstakes too. This year there's more to win than ever before. Win a new top-of-the-line Chevy 454 SS loaded with special options. Win an all-expense-paid trip to one of NASCAR's biggest race events of the season. Plus other great prizes. To enter without purchasing the Winston Cup yearbook, send your name, address, and phone number on a postcard to this address. Or call 800-258-8300 to order your Winston Cup yearbook and automatically be entered in the sweepstakes. But remember, you cannot enter the sweepstakes by phone unless ordering. The Winston Cup yearbook given at the NASCAR Banquet is racing's most valued collectible. This bonded leather coffee table book includes color pictures of every race of the season. A limited number are available to the public, just $29.95. Order now and qualify for the five weekly drawings and win an official IWCR jacket. Only one entry per person, final deadline December 12th, and you must be 21 or older to win. So hurry and book the ride of your life. Get your copy of the Winston Cup yearbook today. They have just dropped the green flag for the restart here at Phoenix. No change up there among the top five. Hunt Strickland works up the outside, and here comes Mark Mark up near the front of the pack. Mark going to second against Bill Elliott on the outside. Elliott's not going to let him off easy, though. Turn four. Today, TNN presents the right guard halfway challenge. The driver leading at the halfway lap with $10,000 from right guard sports to Candy Firstburn, and you'll have a chance to win a Pontiac Grand Prix SE. Call this number to register, and then stay tuned. If they select your entry, Gillette will call you and ask you who led the halfway lap, and if you know, you'll win that Pontiac Grand Prix. one 900 1100 Each call costs 95 cents. Call between now and the halfway point in this race to register to win. Mark Martin moves up to second, but so far, Neil, is still in all four shows, three fours up front. In practice and everything here, they really showed a lot of strength, and the three up right in the front right now, Gant is the only outsider in the bunch, and he's beginning to put just a little bit of heat on Bill Elliott. If there's anybody who can do it in GM, it should be Gant. I tell you, showing a lot of muscle is Derek Cope. He's moved right up in the front there. He's giving Harry Gant all he can stand. Put Cope in the fifth spot. There's that bright red purulator car. Pinched up to the back bumper of Gant's Oldsmobile. 17 laps. Odine up front, Mark Martin, Bill Elliott in Ford, Gant's Oldsmobile, and Coach Chevrolet. Here is Rudd alongside Earnhardt. What could prove to be for $600,000 today. Rusty Wallace on the outside of the two cars. <laughs> Earnhardt right back at him. Yeah, he's not going to let this happen real easy. Do you think it would matter if it was 600 grand or six cents? No, I doubt no. it. I, they're going to race hard, but they uh, they said they had Dale kind of conservative, and the car is just not right here at this place where they're really hurting. He's not getting off two at all. I don't know what the problem is. He can't get off the second turn. They're, that's where they're going right here today, right there. Ricky Rudd moves up to 13th, Earnhardt. Back now to 15th position as Rusty Wallace goes by on the outside and may drag Dale Jarrett, the Citgo car, along with him. Don't count out third place point man Davey Allison there in the Texaco Hamilton car. Neil, I'm not sure that, that uh, Earnhardt knows how to set a car up to be conservative. I think he sets it up running fast as he can, and now that he's backed off, he might have a little uh, pushing problem or something with the chassis. Yeah, he's used to smoking all four tires, not just a couple of them. A little bump there at that dog leg in the middle of the back stretch. You saw Dale Jarrett right behind him. Things get a little tense close. 
That was Earnhardt and Davey Allison that created a little black paint. Midway down the back straightaway. Davey goes by and Earnhardt is really drifting back now. Glenn Jarrett? Really, there's not much of a problem down here in Earnhardt's pit. They're not too concerned. The car's just a little tight starting out here. They wanted the car to be a little tight to start out with. We want a loose race car, so they're not too concerned. If he backs up a few spots right now, they got a chance to come in and change tires a little later on. No worries. Well, he's backed up to 17th position behind Rick Mann. And just ahead of Rick Wilson. Still single file up front, but Mark Martin has caught Jeff Bodine. There's the lead duo, and you saw peeking into the right corner of the screen, Bill Elliott in third. But up front, it's beginning to heat up. There is probably nobody here that needs to win more than Mark Martin. These guys said the heck with the, the point championship. I'm going to race a little bit. Here comes Mark Martin to try on the inside, but Junior Johnson's car has run really well down the straightaway here. Well, now, Martin's got to count some points, too. He's fifth in the standings. But Ernie Irvin, Kenny Schrader, and Sterling Marlin, any one of them could take that spot away today if Martin doesn't have a good day. And that's still a lot of money. Looks like he's starting out on a good day. He's really got the car working down low. There is Sterling Marlin coming up. He's the eighth place point man and started night today. Change the lead at the front. Mark Martin at turn one dipped inside Jeff Bodine and snatched the lead away. So Bodine led the first 23 laps. And now it's Mark Martin in front for Jack Roush and the Folger team. That car will change colors next year, as will many on this circuit. Valvoline goes to the Mark Martin team to lead. I think they hit Valvoline on that car. Positively, maybe, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Bodine is second, Elliott third, and still three fours in front of Harry Gant's Oldsmobile. The Chevrolet of Derek Combe and then Alan Kowicki in sixth in another Ford. And then Sterling Marlin in another Ford. Looks like Mark's able to stretch it out a little bit now that he got around Jeff. He's been working good and low and he pulled away now. Side by side, Derek Combe is under Harry Gannon. Carries him up the track a little bit. Alan Kowicki right there in the Hooters car. And Sterling Marlin percolating along. That's worth looking at. That's the first time Harry Gant. Well, he hadn't got by him yet. I started to say it's the first time we've shown in a couple of races that he hadn't getting past at all. He started too close to the front, but he's used to start back in the rear. He does all the passing, but he, he started up front this time. Harry Gant, who came within a second of winning at Rockingham. Now Marlin inside of the inaugural winner here, Alan Kulwicki. And Marlin squeezes up a notch. He's coming hard. You know, you hate to keep saying it, but here's another guy that needs to win a race. There's so many of these people with these big teams that are supposed to win by now that haven't. And everybody's pretty well just threw everything out the window. They're going for a win today. You're going to see a lot of guys really string that car out and abuse it to try to win, some, win a race today. Marlin in the Maxwell House car has finished 10th, 30th, and 16th in his three races in Phoenix. Brett Bodine right behind Alan Kulwicki. Had a good qualifying effort here. Started off eighth today. Presently in that eighth spot right behind Kulwicki. There are three GM cars in the top ten. Trouble in two. A wild spin for two cars. One of them is Bobby Hamilton. Jeff Purvis is involved. I believe he was the third car in, the second or third car in, and they, caution will come out. They can get them fired off. There wasn't any real contact there. There's just a lot of spinning going on. The third car involved was 76 Bill Sedgwick, who by starting this race has clinched the Winston West Championship for 1991. He was the top Winston West qualifier starting 24th. Picked up a win this year at Mesa Marin and clinches the Winston West Championship. All that smoke and yellow flag and everything, nobody lost a lap. Everybody got refired and took off. Turn two was the incident side here in lap 28. Second caution of the day. And we'll get another look at it. First, though, let's see if they open pit lane this time by. Now, pit road is open and beating time at the zoo. <laughs> Everybody's beating. 
This is not a practice down bit road for speed. This is everybody coming in for tires. There is nobody behind the base driver. Uh, Joe Rutman and Mike Wallace. This is not a happy time for car owners. This is $1,500 going up to the chimney right now. Ricky Rutt's crew, Mark Martin's crew. Steve Emile, Robin Temperton. The rest of that team. And you're watching Banjo Grimm. You're seeing what he sees as he comes around to the left side. Pulls off the left front. Focuses on those lug nuts. Hammers them home. There he is on the left front of the car. He's got to back that car up to get out. Chad Little had it blocked in there. Bill Elliott also had a hard time getting out. There goes Elliott getting around Earnhardt. Earnhardt didn't leave Bill much, if any, room. The rule is on the first lap of caution that the pits are open. Cars on the lead lap may come in. That included everybody except Mike Wallace and perhaps Joe Rutman. It got very busy and very close down there in pit lane. Glenn Jarrett. Okay, I'm in Dale Earnhardt's pits again. I just talked with Richard Childress. Dale came in for the normal four-tire change and fuel, but they also took two rounds of fight out of the right rear jack screw. The car was really, really tight. They weren't at all happy with it. It started working up the racetrack. So they did take some bite out of the car. They're hoping it'll perform a little better now. Buddy, Let's go back up now to Brock Yates. Okay, Mike, I'm with Waddell Wilson. Uh, Waddell, you had a, a slow stop because you got blocked in here a little bit. Other than that, is the race car working all right? Well, you know, the car just a tick loose, but he said that, you know, it was coming to him, but we did put one round of bite in it. But on a pit stop, it was a real good stop, but, you know, one of the cars in front of us pulled in and had us blocked in. We had to back up to get out. Eight up about three seconds, I reckon. That kind of hurts. Well, that's tough because that's hard to make up, and then you get that many more cars in front of you when you get back on the racetrack. Well, let's hope he can do it. Why no, Wilson? Back to you, Mike. Track position so important, Brock. There is Rudd in 11th place after that pit stop. Let's have another look here at what happened. Four wide, five wide. <laughs> That's not gonna go. And there's Jeff Purvis coming around in the 51 car. Looks like Bobby Hamilton going down under to avoid him. They just got stacked up coming off that corner and something had to give. Now here come Bill Sedgwick in the smoke. No place to see, dives to the inside there and oops. Bobby Hamilton. Look at Michael Joy. He's had so much happen to him. He just stopped in the racetrack. He's had enough happen to him already. He's not even taking a chance of getting in the wreck. Randy LaJoy, if tell Shane he is not my brother. Oh, okay. And that's LaJoy. <laughs> <laughs> if he's up front, I'll claim him as a relation. Boy, all this he's minute, nobody hit each other. They just kept going on by. Whoops. Said we tried to, tried to get in there. Close call there. 31 laps complete. Jeff Bodine, Tim Brewer, and the Junior Johnson crew got him out of the pits first. Mark Martin, Harry Gant now third. Brett Bodine has moved up into the fourth spot. There's the rest of the top ten. All familiar names. As we complete 31 laps. When you're talking about track positions, the key. Here's some of the guys here moved up on these caution flags. Before when you can do it in the pits, it sure makes it nice. Huh? All the guys are working their way back in front. Among the title contenders, Bernhardt will restart ninth. Rudd is 12th. Davey Allison is 14th. And Harry Gant, the fourth place point man, is third. Green flag. Joe Rutman and Mike Wallace down to the inside. Along with Jeff Purvis and Randy LeJoy. Dave Marcus snuck up there on the inside and almost picked off a spot. Bodine leads them down the back straightaway. Mark Martin must deal with Joe Rutman's lapped car. Puts him away going into three. Again in third. Here comes Brett Bodine. Might have traded shades of green between he and Harry Gant. Let's go back in the pack. There is Earnhardt with Darrell Waltrip, who knows his way around a championship chase. Ricky Rutt. Darrell wants to be in the middle of the championship, but not that way, I'm sure. He'd like to be battling for it. Walter on the outside of Earnhardt. You know, he really don't want to do this at this point in the race, but he don't have a choice. Where is he going to fall back to? There's only two places to run by yourself out here, up front or out back. 
Bell just drove around and pulling away. His car has been working well since the race started. He was able to move up on the first start. Looks like he's got it hooked up again. Well, they got by Derek Cope and Bill Elliott there. And Ricky Rudd got by while we were talking. They didn't fix the car, whatever was wrong. They didn't fix it on that adjustment. There's Rudd ahead of Earnhardt. But let's face it, the tasks these two men have in front of them are very different. Rudd must run as hard as he can. It's his only chance. Earnhardt has got to run probably the most, one of the most thinking races of his career. Probably one of the hardest races he'd ever have to run, simply because you'd never see that black bar doing what it's doing right now, just taking it a little bit easier. It's, uh, it just doesn't fit the character. Smoke from the Jimmy Beans car, Mike Wallace has taken it to pit row. 36 laps are completed, Phoenix International Raceway. Jeff Bodine enjoys a five-car length lead. Mark Martin has 12 car lengths to third place, Brett Bodine. Then it's Sterling Marlins and Harry Gant. We'll be right back. The American Society for Testing and Materials set a new technical standard for antifreeze used to protect heavy-duty truck engines against boiling, freeze-ups, and corrosion. Only one of the three best-selling antifreeze brands made for cars meets that standard. It's the patented car antifreeze that can also keep heavy-duty engines running at their peak. Protect your engine from freeze-ups and boilovers. Remember the heavy-duty standard. Don't stop short of the peak. Hey. In America, your car doesn't just get you from here to there. It's a part of your life. To give your car complete protection, Texaco has developed Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. With not one, but three kinds of protection against heat stress, starting friction, and engine dirt. Haviland Formula 3. Add more life to your car. Why not have one for the road? Someone is counting on you. It could be your year for lotto. You haven't seen Europe yet. In fact, you never know what's around the corner. If you need a better answer, you don't understand the question. A message from Bud Dry. Coming up tonight, following the Pyro 500, American Sports Cavalcade travels to Arizona for 90 minutes of nitro-burning, top fuel-eliminating, 600-horsepower thrill-a-minute action. It's the NHRA Arizona Nationals tonight, 7 Eastern, 6 Central here on TNN. Third place is at stake right here, and what a dogfight. Brett Bodine on the outside. Sterling Marlin just takes it away. We were talking, uh, Neil and I, down in the garage area yesterday about uh, Sterling not winning a race this year. It's time for him to win a race, and he's very capable. The car's capable, the crew's capable, and you can see him going for it now. Well, Junior Johnson didn't say they need to win a race. They had to win one, so looks like they're going after it now. Somebody gave Sterling a hot foot. He's up to third. Darrell Waltrip, left side of your screen, also moving very well as he has passed Harry Gant. Gant is uh, backed up a bit here. Something we haven't seen in recent weeks. And Alan Kulwicki, just to the left of there, has caught Harry, or rather Brett Bodine for fourth spot. Up front, there's Jeff Bodine, the oldest of the three racing brothers. Maybe someday we'll see all three of them in a Winston Cup race. Today, the Wallace brothers, Rusty, Kenny, and Mike, all started this event. There's Ricky Rutt and Dale Jarrett. That fight is for ninth place. Bill Sedgwick right with them. I believe he's now a lap down. Just Jarrett getting up under Ricky up off the corner. And, you know, we talked about three or four forwards right on the front. This is a good track for them. They seem to run off that corner very well and drove right, right away from Ricky up off the corner. A spin at turn two. One car, a wild ride. It is the leader, Jeff Bodine. Just a snap spin all by himself, coming around at turn two. And we'll have a caution. About to kick some debris up on the racetrack. He, he spun it, caught it, got going again. Spun back to about 10 places, the whole position he was in after he got going again. <laughs> now the pits are closed, whatever the difficulty with that car, but I will have to come around another lap. And he did not make very smart progress coming around to the flag. 
No, they raced back to the caution, and uh, he didn't. He got it going and just kind of settled in and fell way back. He was about 10th when he got running. See some action here. Everybody coming in again. And Ernie Irvin from the back of the Rusty Wallace car. Let's see what happened to the race leader here at lap 44, Jeff Bodine. Just got loose? Absolutely just got loose. Let me tell you, to run fast around this racetrack, it's got to be loose, hasn't it? but you can't have the car real tight or won't run fast. And he had the car evidently real fast yeah. leading the race, but he just lost it. How do you do this, Buddy Baker, driving school instructor? <laughs> well, you do as much as you possibly can. Now, you know, you hear people say, I just lock it up and turn it left. Well, that's not true. You drive it till it stops. And then uh, he did the right things. It worked out that when the car was coming towards him and things like that, so he had plenty of room to maneuver the car. It'll be a quick caution. Earnhardt and Joe Rutman come to pit lane. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt has fallen from 7th to 18th in eight green flag laps. Glenn Jarrett? Okay, Jeff Bodine brings the Budweiser Ford into his pit. The crew goes to work. They're changing right side and left side tires. Obviously, after a spin, they want to change all four tires. As quick as they get this done, we're going to try to get word with Tim Brewer to find out just what happened out there. They are putting some wedge or taking some putting some wedge in the car. In fact, this guy is jacking on that screw like there's no tomorrow back there. So evidently, cars Jeff, Jeff's car must have been very, very loose. Also bumping the rear spoiler up. So they had a problem. He was out front. The car was real loose. We've got Daryl Andrews taking the car set up there for Jeff. That pit stop, 22.7 seconds. But as it comes under caution, we will not get a restart. We had a one to go on the field. Dave Marcus comes to pit lane. They will take one more lap of caution. One thing we should explain. With the pit road speed limit, a green flag stop here is death warmed over. You have to come so slow <laughs> down pit road while everybody else is going so fast, you might as well drive onto the truck if you've got to stop under green to have any chance to win here today. Let's go back to Glenn. Jim Brewer, the crew chief for, Der for uh, Jeff Bodine, he's on the radio right now with Jeff to see if everything is okay. We'll get a word with him just a moment here as soon as he gets through talking. They're in heavy conversation right now. Jim Brewer, a little early trouble out there. What happened? Did Jeff said? Uh, he just jumped the gas a little bit too quick over there, and the thing went around on him. Uh, you know, he was he was in pretty good shape. He told me a little bit earlier he was a little bit loose, but we'll get it tightened up, get back to the front. Maybe we can get that money in. Well, it looked like that you put some wedge in the car and also bumped the rear spoiler up. Yeah, we uh, made a couple adjustments there. Maybe we'll get it back in the bottom. You don't seem to be too awfully concerned. No, nah, not yet. Okay, he's not too worried he didn't hit anything and nobody hit him. Let's have a look at the top 10 as we get set to go back to green. 36 cars are on the lead lap. Mark Martin goes to the front. Sterling Marlin now second. Still Ford's up front. Brett Bodine third in the Buick. The Wiki's Ford. Waltrip Chevrolet. Gantz Oldsmobile. A Chevy for Cope. A Ford for Jarrett. And Chevy's for Schrader and Rudd. Restart green flag. Only two cars have led this race, Jeff Bodine and Mark Martin, both in Ford. Now maybe we can see how good Sterling's car was. He was he's moving up on it, but he was so far back it was hard to gauge it. He's right with the leader now. We'll see if Sterling's got enough of that car to handle on Mark Martin. Martin with a car length as they enter turn three. Cole Wickey comes up to third. Sterling Marlin in the Maxwell House 22, second at Daytona, second in the Winston Open, second at Bristol. Still looking for that first win. Well, who will lead this race at halfway? Be sure to stay tuned to TNN. And first, call the Gillette Right Guard folks to register for the halfway challenge. 1-900-737-1100. You must be 18 or older to enter. It's 95 cents a call. And if that Gillette calls you after the halfway mark and you know who led that lap and won their $10,000, you'll win a new Pontiac. Bill Elliott fading back. Dropping well back in the field of 17. Up front, Sterling Marlin has caught Mark Martin. Sterling's handling a little bit better in the corners, but the Roush car is flying down straight away. Interesting matchup. Watching close up right here getting in the corner. He must pull him five car lengths getting in the corner. Hit straight away and Mark just pulls away about three car lengths. How much of that is set up and how much of it could be, say, a different gear? 
Well, there's a lot of things in there that, Mike, if the car's handling good, and go ahead and get, get in the throttle, but, uh, you know, if that thing's handling, you use all that motor. Here is Jeff Bodine, 31st place on the move back up. Again, 36 cars on the lead lap. Bodine trying to scramble back to the front. Long way to go. Just behind them, the Hooters car, Alan Kowick is moving into the show, and Darrell Walker's running for us, so we're going to have a tight race for the lead here in just a second. Kowick is always, since this place was built and put on the Winston uh, Series, uh, the seven cars have been real, real strong out here. Ricky Rudd, just ahead of Davey Allison, and Harry Gann is right there. Now that takes us back to 10th place. Mike Walter in the middle of that, Ernie Urban. And the last star of Joel Rutland. Neil, I guarantee you that uh, Davey Allison was happy to see that caution just now. He had uh, been adjusting on that car. It was pushing real bad to start with, and now he's in the, in the fight now. He, and that's the guy he's racing the points right in front of him. 46 points separate Rudd and Allison. Mike, even though they're battling for second place, what it pays for second place is like winning a championship in the other uh, division of the race. That's right. Winston puts so much money in the point system that that's a big battle right there for a lot of money. And right with him, Harry Gant. Now, there's two, three, four in the points right in line. The only thing is Harry won enough last month. He's not worried about the points. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> carrying shingles. He probably hurt his back carrying all that money to the bank. Let's have a look back up front and reset the field for you. Mark Martin, the leader. Sterling Marlin in second. Alan Kowicki in third at 54 laps. Darrell Walter in fourth. Brett Bodine has the fifth spot in the viewing. Then it's Derek Cope, Dale Jarrett, Hunt Strickland, Kenny Schrader, and Ricky Rudd. We'll be back to Phoenix right after this. to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. Most of our customers come to AutoZone for low prices and for parts they can replace themselves. But many people come because we speak their language. You know, things like duration and lift and compression ratio, stuff like that. Because a guy who's going to rebuild an engine, he won't buy parts from just anybody. And since AutoZone stocks complete engines, we know what makes them tick inside and out. Sure, we sell our best parts at our best prices every day. But if we know something that's going to help you do the job right, you get that free. Before this, you never heard of cold filtered. Before this, you never heard of genuine draft taste in a bottle. Now hear this. Get out of the old bitty for the cold. Cold filter taste what it's all about. Never heat past your eyes. So the rim smooth taste don't cool down. For those who discover this real draft taste, the world can be a very cool place. Get out of the old, get into the cold. Miller Genuine Draft. We are under the fourth caution of the day, and everybody's heart skipped a beat here as Dale Earnhardt spun in turn four. Let's follow that Earnhardt stop. Well, the Earnhardt brings the car in. I just asked Richard Childress as he brought the car down pit road if somebody, if he made contact with somebody, but he said no, he just lost it, spun it around. Again, no damage to the car. He didn't hit anybody, nobody hit him. Now they are jacking wedge into the left rear. Childress also said the car was loose 